So this lecture is part of an online course on Galois theory and we will be talking about Arbel's theorem. This is the very famous theorem, it's a general quintic, cannot be solved by radicals. So a quintic just means an equate polynomial of degree 5x to the 5 plus ax to the 4 plus bx cubed plus cx squared plus dx plus e. And solvable by radicals means you can't write down the solutions explicitly in terms of a, b, c, d and e using the field operations and taking nth roots of something where n is allowed to be anything at all. So um, a little bit later we're going to show that you can solve polynomials of degree 3 and 4 by radicals. Of course everybody knows how to do degree 2 if you've got ax squared plus bx plus c equals naught then x is um, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So the formulas for cubics and quartics are really rather messy to write out explicitly but um, you, you, you can do them. And what Arbel done showed is that you can't do this for degree 5 equations. So what we're going to do is, um, well first of all we're going to work over a characteristic zero field such as the rationals. Um, there are some additional complications for fields of characteristic greater than zero that I'll, I'll occasionally mention. So um, we'll usually be assuming, have a default assumption that the field is characteristic zero unless I say otherwise. And what we're going to do is to show that if alpha can be expressed by radicals over a field k of characteristic zero, then alpha is contained in a finite solvable Galois extension of, of k. So solvable just means the Galois group is solvable. And we recall from the earlier group theory course that what this means is there's a chain of subgroups, 1 equals g0 contained in g1, contained in g2 and so on, contained in gn equals g, so that gi is a normal subgroup of gi plus 1 and gi plus 1 over gi is abelian. Um, actually, you, you, you can also assume that's cyclic if you want, it doesn't really make much difference. So, in other words, G can be kind of split up into abelian or even cyclic subgroups. Um, so, um, in order to show that a fifth degree polynomial cannot be solved by radicals, what you want to do is to find a polynomial of degree 5 whose Galois group is um, non-solvable. And there's one easy way to do this that we had before. You can take the rationals, take x1 up to x5, and take the subfield fixed by the symmetric group of order 5. So as we said earlier, this will be qe1 up to e5, where these are the elementary symmetric functions. So e1 is x1 plus x5 and so on. And um, then if we take the... Um, uh, fifth degree polynomial x to the 5 um, minus e1 x to the 4 and so on. It has roots x1 up to x5 and since s5 is not solvable this means that x1 up to x5 cannot be expressed um, in radicals using e1 up to e5. So the key point is that the symmetric group S5 
is not solvable. Um, you may remember from group theory that the symmetric groups S1 up to S4 are solvable, which is why we can solve polynomials of degrees 1 to 4 by radicals, at least in characteristic 0. Well, OK, that, that shows us you can't write down a general formula that works simultaneously for all polynomials, but it doesn't quite rule out the possibility of doing it for any particular polynomial with integer coefficients. Um, so some polynomials with integer coefficients you certainly can solve by radicals. For example, if we take x to the 5 minus 2, well, I can certainly solve this one by radicals and just take x as the fifth root of 2. Um, and you, you, you could imagine that maybe by some sort of funny coincidence, every single polynomial that happened to have integer coefficients would have a solvable Galois group, even though the general polynomial doesn't. So we have to rule that out. So can we find a polynomial with integer coefficients or rational coefficients but, um, with non-solvable Galois group. Um, now normally working the, out the Galois group of a polynomial of degree 5 is a real pain but there's a there's a rather easy trick for finding a few examples with um, Galois group S5 um, which is suppose that the polynomial f of x, let's, let's work over the integers, is irreducible degree 5 and has exactly two non-real roots. It's easy to find examples of such polynomials. For instance, x to the 5 minus 4x plus 2. You can easily check that its graph sort of looks something like that. It's got exactly three real roots. It's irreducible by Eisenstein. Um, so, um, why, if it has these properties, is its Galois group S5? Well, the Galois group is contained in S5, which is just the permutations of all the roots. And its order is divisible by 5, because the polynomial is irreducible. So the first, when, when you add one root of it, you get an extension of degree 5. And you might get a higher extension by adding further roots, you might not, who knows. Whatever, it's all is divisible by 5, so G has a 5 cycle. Now, there are exactly two non-real roots, so G contains a transposition. That's just an element that exchanges two roots and fixes the others, and this transposition is easy, it's just complex conjugation. Since there are exactly two um, non-real roots, complex conjugation flips those and fixes the others. And now we can see that any subgroup of S5 containing a transposition and a 5-cycle is the whole of S5. And that's easy to see. We may as well take the transposition is 1, 2. And what's the 5 cycle going to do? Well, it's going to map 1 to something and something to something else. And what we can do is we can raise the 5 cycle to some power so that it maps 1 to 2. So a power of the 5 cycle is 1, well, it maps 1 to 2, and then we may as well relabel all the other elements so, so, so that the 5 cycle is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So by renumbering the 5 roots, we can arrange that the transposition and the 5 cycle are, are like those. But then conjugates of 1, 2 under the 5 cycle. Well, conjugates just mean you relabel these elements according to the cycle. So its conjugates are going to be 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, and 5, 1. But we don't really care about that. And now um, it's well known and easy to check that these generate the symmetric group 
S5. Details of that are in the course on, on group theory if you want to look them up. Um, so we found an explicit polynomial over the rationals that can't be um, solved by radicals. Um, by the way, if you're wondering about this condition that there are exactly two complex roots, it actually is essential. So we can ask, what if there are um, zero or four complex roots? Well, in these cases, um, the, 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 an irreducible fifth degree polynomial might indeed be solvable by radicals. For example, x to the 5 minus 2 has four complex roots and it's irreducible and it's obviously solvable by radicals. In fact we can take a quick look at what what goes on because uh, uh, th this, this will be an example of um, um, what we're going to do later. So how do we find the splitting field of this? Well we do it in two steps. First of all we add in the fifth roots of one, and there are there are four primitive fifth roots. Um, so you remember x to the five minus one over x minus one is x to the four plus x cubed plus x squared plus x plus one, which is irreducible. So if we write this out in the complex plane, the the four we're going to add the four primitive fifth roots of one, like that. So we get an extension q contains in q zeta, where, where zeta is, say, one of these primitive fifth roots of 1. And now we add in um, fifth root of 2. So we get q contains q zeta contains q, um, the fifth root of 2 together with zeta. And now this extension is normal and for that matter Galois, um, notice if we just added in the fifth root of 2 we wouldn't get a normal extension. We first need to add in a fifth root of unity. And now we can sort of see what the Galois group is because the Galois group of this we saw earlier is just the little abelian group of order 4 which consists of the units of the integers mod 5. Whereas this bit of the Galois group um, well, we can multiply the fifth root of 2 by any fifth root of unity. So the Galois group of this bit is z over 5z. So altogether we've got a group of order 20. Um, and you can check it's actually non-abelian because this um, group z modulo 5z star acts non-trivial on z modulo 5z. By the way, remember... When you, when you go to a Galois group, the, the, the groups are sort of upside down to the field. So um, if you have the Galois group, um, the z over 5z is a normal subgroup of the Galois group, and the group divided by z over 5z is this group of order 4, z over 5z star. So it's very confusing because the small... Here we have a subfield, which, but the subfield doesn't correspond to the, this subgroup. It corresponds to a quotient group. And in this particular case, this quotient group also happens to be a subgroup, but in general it won't be. Um, so um, we, we, we're, we're, the, the point of this example is that we're getting a solvable extension, but we get it in two steps. We first add in roots of unity, then we add in the, 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 the radical that we're really interested in. So that's an example with four complex roots. What about an example with zero complex roots? Well, this doesn't have to be um, non-solvable either. For example, we could take cosine of 2 pi over 11, which is equal to zeta plus zeta to the minus 1, where zeta is a primitive 11th root of um, 1. So why are we taking 11? Well, let's see if I can draw 11 things correctly. So we get 1, 2, 
uh, wait, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so here we've got 11 roots of unity, and one of them is the number one, which we're not really interested in, and then we can project the others onto the real line, and as usual we get these numbers cosine of 2 pi over 11, cosine of 4 pi over 11, and so on. And altogether we get five of these, which is why I chose 11, because 11 minus 1 over 2 is 5. And we can ask, what is the Galois group of the field generated by these? Well, we sort of did this for cosine of 2 pi over 7, and it's pretty similar here. So the Galois group of Q of zeta over Q is just z over 11z star, which is cyclic of order 10. And the Galois group of cosine of 2 pi over 11 modulo Q um, <coughs> will be um, a quotient group of this, where we quotient out by the element plus or minus 1. So this is isomorphic to a cyclic group of order 5. So what we've got here is a polynomial with, an, it's an irreducible polynomial with five real roots, which are these numbers cosine of 2 pi over 11, 4 pi over 11, and so on. And its um, Galois group is definitely solvable. In fact, it's even cyclic of order 5. So we really did need to assume there were exactly two complex roots. If there are any other number of complex roots, that doesn't force it to be non-solvable, although, of course, it might be. Um, well, um, so that's given some examples of fifth-degree polynomials with non-solvable Galois groups, but now we'd better explain why, if an equation is solvable by radicals, um, we get a solvable Galois extension. So what I want to do is to sketch this implication. Um, so suppose something is solvable by radicals. We're going to construct the Galois extension in several steps. So first of all, we add in all roots of unity we need. Um, and um, so, so, so we're going to take our field k, which might be the rationals, and add in a root of unity of some high order. It's, it's, it's going to be a, a root of unity of order n, where n is big enough so that, so that every radical we're taking is, is a radical of order dividing n. And we can ask, what is the... So, 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 so we're going to take this to be a splitting field of x to the n minus 1 for some large n. And remember, we're working characteristic 0, so this is actually a separable polynomial. If you work in characteristic p, one of the complications is that this polynomial is no longer separable in general. Um, anyway, the Galois group, the elements of the Galois group all take zeta to some power of i, so, 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 sorry, to some power of zeta, where i is in z modulo nz star. Now, it's not necessarily true that all elements of z modulo nz turn up in the Galois group. That depends on the field k. Uh, we're going to show that they do for the rationals, but in general they don't. Um, so... Um, and as usual, the um, zeta to the i times, if, if, if we compose the automorphism taking zeta to the i and zeta to the j, we get zeta to the i j. So the Galois group is a subgroup of z over n z star. Um, in particular, it's abelian and therefore solvable. 
As I said, it may not be the whole of this group, it's sometimes less, but it doesn't really matter if it's smaller than this, because it's still abelian and that's all, all we really care about. Um, now, once we've got, once we've added in all the roots of unity, the next step is to, so, so, so let's, let's put k1 equals k with our root of unity. Then let's put k2 equals k1 together with some nth root of an element alpha in, in k1. And let's put k3 to be k2 where we um, apply some other root. Um, so this doesn't have to be an nth root, it could be some other root. Um, so we built up a tower of fields like this. Except that's not quite right. Well, we saw the problem with this earlier. The problem is that k um, n might not be, sorry, k n might not be normal. Um, just recall a very simple example of this. You might take q contains in q root two, contains in q with square root of the square root of two. And then this extension here is not normal. Well, that's quite easy to fix. The reason is this, that this isn't normal is we only took the square root of, of, of this number and we forgot to take the square root of all its conjugates. So what we should really do is take q square root of the square root of two and then we take the square root of the square root of minus two. So these are the conjugates of the square root of 2. So when we are building up these fields um, we shouldn't take k2 to be um, k1 where we, we take a root of alpha 1. We should take it k1 with nth root of alpha 1 and the nth root of all conjugates of alpha 1. And similarly we shouldn't take k3 um, to uh, just take a root of alpha 2, but we should take it to be k2 with um, some root of alpha 2 and all conjugates under the Galois group. And, and if we remember to put in all the conjugates, this ensures that each of these um, fields is going to be normal. And we also need to know what does the Galois group of this look like? Well, what's the Galois group of... of um, Let's take a field L nth root of alpha over L, where L contains the nth roots of 1. And we're assuming it contains exactly n nth roots of 1, so it's not in, doesn't have characteristic dividing n or anything like that. Um, then the gamma group um, consist of elements taking the nth root of alpha to the nth root of alpha times zeta to the k for some k in z modulo nz because um, any nth root of alpha must be the nth root of alpha we first thought of times times some power of our primitive nth root of unity. Um, and you can see the composition of these automorphisms corresponds to addition in z modulo nz. So the Galois group of this is a subgroup of z modulo nz. Um, as before, it doesn't necessarily have to be the whole of z modulo nz, but again this doesn't matter. It's a subgroup of a cyclic group. So in particular, this group here is abelian. So every time we add an nth root, we get a normal extension with um, a cyclic Galois group. So what happens is we can get a chain of fields um, we get various fields like this up to k whatever it is such that each of these groups is a, a normal extension with Galois group abelian. So it's either contained in z modulo nz star or it's contained in z modulo nz for some um, where n is the largest possible where, where n is 
something big enough so that it includes all possible radicals we're taking. So, um, by, you remember by including radicals of all conjugates, we could also arrange that this extension here was normal and therefore Galois because we're working in characteristic zero. So we've got a chain of fields such that each field is, a, is, a, is an abelian extension of the one earlier. Now, if we look at the corresponding Galois groups, I guess that shouldn't be an M. Now, each of these is, um, so each of these groups is a normal subgroup of the earlier one and the quotient is abelian. So it's one of these groups here. So the Galois group of the whole extension we've got is therefore solvable because we can break it up into abelian groups. So this completes the sketch of Arbel's theorem that fifth degree polynomials are not solvable by radicals. We can ask the converse. Um, if a Galois group is solvable, can we represent elements um, in the field, so I suppose we've got K in M, can we represent elements of M using radicals? And the answer to this turns out to be no in general. There are actually some problems in characteristic P that we're going to discuss. Um, but it turns out to be true in characteristic zero. And this is what we want to talk about next. Um, you see that um, by, we, if the extension is solvable, we can split it up into a lot of extensions, each of which has a Galois group that is cyclic of order P. So we have the following problem. Suppose um, we have a Galois extension K over M with Galois group, a cyclic group of or prime order. Um, using P for that is probably bad since P isn't necessarily the characteristic, but anyway. Um, then we can say, what can we say about the extension L over K. And this question is going to be the topic of the next lecture. So we want to describe the simplest sorts of Galois extensions, which are those whose Galois group is cyclic of prime order.